Revelation chapter 13 is the Bible's symbolic centerpiece of end times prophecy that we are now watching unfold in real time before our eyes in these last days, just before the rapture of the church. It describes two very distinct, extremely dangerous beasts that are rising in these end times we have now entered. We are developing a profile of this first beast that John sees in his prophetic vision, the beast rising out of the sea. Please open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13, verses 2 through 4. As you're turning in your Bibles, I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 1. You recall that Revelation is the only book in the entire Word of God that promises a blessing to those who study its contents. The scriptures say, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Hallelujah. Are you ready for your blessing? Okay, let's get started. In Revelation chapter 13, beginning in verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Let's pray over this study. Father, thank you for your precious word, and thank you for this study. Lord Jesus, we lift up this study to you now as a sacrifice of praise. And Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to anoint this study. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to his church. Lord, teach us what you would have, you, have us know, and we give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 1, we learn that this beast rising out of the sea represents a sinister, anti-Christian global system of control that is rising out of the increasing sin of this fallen world. From there came the shocking discovery in verse 2 that this system is being organized, guided, and directed by wealthy elites privileged people in high places who crave ultimate power and authority so much that they have literally given themselves over to Satan through witchcraft. Now, I want to take a moment in this study and really unpack what we have learned here from the scriptures. In the public arena for all to see, these are investment bankers, philanthropists, members of royal families, and business executives at the pinnacle of privilege and wealth. But behind the scenes, behind closed doors, they are nothing more than witches, demon-possessed, who Satan himself has chosen and positioned to be in authority over this evil, rising beast system. Elite witches of a high Luciferian order who are willing to perform the most satanic occult rituals, spells, sorcery and magic that is necessary to gain ever more power and influence. Let that sink in for just a moment, because that's quite a statement. But look at what the scriptures say. Look at it again. The scriptures here in verse 2 clearly state that the dragon, Satan himself, is giving these elites demonic power and positioning them in various roles of authority to guide, direct, and operate a satanic system that will soon control global economics, politics, and religion. These demon-possessed elite globalists gain their power and position from Satan through witchcraft, which by definition makes them witches. In verse 1 we learn that this beast is birthed of the dragon of Satan himself, because parent and child both have the same number of heads and horns, 
which here represent demonic power, and elite witches using occult rituals, spells, sorcery, and magic to gain the demonic power behind the hidden knowledge necessary to develop such a devious, complex system of global control explains how and why this is happening. This sounds so weird, doesn't it? I mean, it's tough to get my rational mind around all of this. You got to admit that when someone says that a satanic system directed by high-level witches is preparing to take over the world, it sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? However, we must recognize that this is exactly what the Word of God describes to us in Ephesians chapter 6. Look at what the scriptures teach us from verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As Christians, we should not be surprised by what we are now seeing in these last days. We are now watching Ephesians chapter 6 play out before our eyes in real time. As we watch this beast system rise out of increasing sin in this fallen world, we are seeing it manifest as the works of the flesh described in Galatians chapter 5, which includes witchcraft, the same witchcraft that the evil king Manasseh was involved in. Look at what Galatians 5 teaches us about the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, and there it is, witchcraft. And this is the very same witchcraft that the evil king Manasseh, another wealthy, privileged elite that craved ever more power and authority, this is the same witchcraft that Manasseh used while arrogantly ruling over the kingdom of Judah in 2 Chronicles chapter 33, over 2,050 years ago. Notice what the scriptures teach us. Manasseh did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He used all sorts of occult tools, but it, they included enchantments, and he used witchcraft. In other words, King Manasseh was nothing more than a demon-possessed witch in a position of authority, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, publicly displaying spiritual wickedness in high places. And now, as this demonically inspired beast system rises to full exposure before our eyes, in the form of lockdowns, in the enforcement of masks, in the lawlessness of elected officials, in the insane chaos we see sweeping throughout our culture, in the stolen election and the attempted coup to overthrow our government, as this demonic system moves into position for a global takeover, these elite witches, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, are being exposed for what they really are by their public display of spiritual wickedness in high places. These globalists arrogantly perform more and more occultic rituals in public, in plain sight for all to see just like they did at the satanic open ceremony of the Goddard Base Tunnel in Switzerland in June of 2016. The Goddard Base Tunnel is a railway tunnel that runs through the Swiss Alps in Switzerland. It is the world's longest railway and deepest traffic tunnel, and it's the first flat, low-level route through the Alps. It opened on June 1st, 2016, with a public ceremony attended by the most powerful people in Europe, including European dignitaries, such as Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany, President Francois Hollande of France, Swiss President Johann Schneider Amann, and Italian Prime Minister Mario Renzi, along with all the other wealthy, privileged elites. The opening ceremony cost approximately $9.7 million to produce, and it was broadcast on television all over the world 
so that countless numbers of people anticipated an elegant, formal celebration of a magnificent feat of engineering, construction, and advanced technology. But instead, the world witnessed an incredibly bizarre, very dark, disturbing, weirdly satanic ritual that turned a magnificent feat of engineering into a religious ceremony dedicated to the human embodiment of Satan. This whole event was so weird that you have to see it to believe it, so I'll leave a link to the video of this broadcast below. The central figure of this strange, sinister ritual was a goat man bearing an eerie, striking resemblance to Satan. During the ceremony, the goat man dies, recovers from his fatal wound, and then is worshipped by everyone else and is crowned as the ruler of the world. The exact description of, of events that we're following in Revelation chapter 13. But perhaps the most amazing thing was that instead of being shocked or alarmed at what they had witnessed, Europe's most powerful people stood up and gave it a standing ovation. They applauded a highly publicized satanic ritual that showcased their sheer financial power, resources, and manpower to the entire world. Think about that for just a moment. In the past, these elite witches would only conduct this sort of dark ritual behind the scenes, on a much smaller scale, out of the view of the general public. But now, in these last days, they have grown bolder and much more arrogant. Here they use the opening ceremony of the world's deepest and longest tunnel to broadcast how they control the world's resources and manpower, how they are the only ones who can make these types of mega projects happen because they alone control all global politics, finance, and business. And they did it by openly, publicly, deliberately worshiping Satan in a ritual broadcast across the planet. This is witchcraft of the highest order. We can now see this satanic system in rising in power publicly all around us. Consider the photo posted on Twitter in January 2019 by Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, the controversial and corrupt Director General of the World Health Organization of the United Nations. That photo deliberately focuses on the disturbing presence of a demonic statue of the Hindu goddess Shiva, the Destroyer, prominently displayed at the head of the table during an important meeting that he had between the World Health Organization and a Chinese organization working for Communist China on the domination of global markets. The presence of this satanic statue overseeing this event is even more unsettling when you consider that Dr. Tedros, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, is now the face of the world's global response to the coronavirus crisis. Wow. Let that sink in for a minute. The United Kingdom this week began vaccinating people for the coronavirus. And in the next few weeks, the United States is also going to begin doing it. And here we see the leader of this response to this crisis, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, conducting meetings under a satanic statue of the goddess Shiva. Wow. That's not all. This same satanic goddess Shiva is the statue that represents the landmark of CERN, the European Particle Physics Research Organization that operates the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest and highest energy particle collider and the largest, most expensive machine in the world. It's located in Geneva, Switzerland, and it's the place where many people believe this machine is being used by the occult elite in an attempt to open a portal to the bottomless pit of demons in Revelation chapter 9. But that's a different study. 
It's no coincidence that this satanic statue at CERN was unveiled by global elitists. They included a group, and I'm going to try to use their names here, that included His, Excell His Excellency K.M. Chandrajashkara, the Indian ambassador to the World Trade Organization of the United Nations, Dr. Anil Kakodar, an eminent nuclear scientist, and Dr. Robert Amor, the former Director General of CERN. Wow. And that's not all. This is the same satanic statue of Shiva that appeared in a shocking online video that surfaced in 2016 of what appears to be an actual human sacrifice staged on the grounds of CERN in the middle of the night by mysterious hooded figures engaging in an apparent ritual under the huge statue where a woman is stabbed at the end of the ritual. The mainstream propaganda media quickly went on record stating that this shocking footage appears to have been staged as a prank by the elite scientists of Europe's top physics lab, but their identity and motives were never revealed. Now ask yourself this, what in the world are elite scientists doing videoing a human sacrifice to a demonic statue? Think about that. And speaking of human sacrifice, what about the replicas of the satanic temple of Baal that were erected for public display by elite politicians, including Boris Johnson, who is now the Prime Minister of England? They were erected in London, in New York City, and in Washington, D.C. as part of the World Heritage Week celebrated by UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Think about that. To increase global awareness of a specific culture, the leaders of the United Nations chose to celebrate the satanic legacy of Baal an ancient demon god that the Canaanites worshipped through rituals of child sacrifice and sexual immorality. This is witchcraft of the highest order. Then there is the elite politician Christine Lagarde, the former head of the International Monetary Fund, who is now the president of the European Central Bank. She delivered a bizarre speech in Washington, D.C. on January 15, 2014, that was supposed to address global economics. But instead, Lagarde used heavily coded occult numerology that left perplexed financial analysts scratching their heads in wonder, as she appeared to be sending some sort of cryptic signals to elite insiders to prepare for a possible presidential calamity a coming economic collapse, and the total reset of all global currencies. Think about that. During a public speech on global economics, the president of the European Central Bank, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, uses an advanced form of fortune telling that is associated with witches to forecast the future and discover the secret meanings of events and occurrences. This is witchcraft of the highest order. And by the way, all of those things that she was sending those signals about, a presidential calamity, that's happening right now, check. A coming economic collapse, that's happening right now, check. And a total reset of all global currencies, again, happening right now, check. And if we're still here and the Lord tarries, we're going to examine all of these things very carefully. And who can forget the elite politician Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, who in July 2017 summoned over 900 politicians from both houses of the French Parliament to a rare Congress at the Palace of Louis XIV in Versailles, where he arrogantly declared that he will govern France like Jupiter the Roman king of the gods, 
and threatened to overrule lawmakers with a referendum if they tried to frustrate his so-called reforms that he planned to impose on the legislature. Officials who were there then told the media that his thought process was simply too complex for journalists to understand. Now this is really weird because Jupiter is the Roman version of the Greek god Zeus, which represents Satan himself. So the president of France, filled with the spirit of Antichrist, publicly declares that he wants to govern like Satan and those serving him believe that his demonic thoughts are simply too complex for normal human beings to possibly understand. Where exactly, or more specifically, who is he getting these thoughts from? And what exactly is he doing behind the scenes, behind closed doors, that makes him want to be like Satan? This is witchcraft of the highest order. And most importantly, this example is just one of many reasons why more and more people believe that Macron might possibly be the Antichrist, waiting in the wings of the palace to be introduced on the world stage at the appropriate time as the son of perdition. Again, if the Lord tarries and we're still here, we're going to be examining this in greater detail later on. I also want to make a note here that Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church does a presentation that's called, Has the Democratic Party of the United States Been Taken Over by the Occult? And I've got that presentation on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link to it here, and I would ask you to go visit that too. Pastor Crone walks through in great detail all of the witchcraft that appears to be infiltrating throughout the Democratic Party. And aren't we seeing that now in this fraudulent election, this stolen election of power, and this attempted coup of our government? Anyway, check that out when you have a chance. So now we can understand how the arrogant power of the beast system in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, is playing out in real time in these last days, on public display for all to see. We are now watching demon-possessed elite globalists filled with the spirit of Antichrist publicly admire and arrogantly honor Satan himself, the dragon that is giving them hidden knowledge and supernatural power through witchcraft to control the world's resources and manpower, to control global politics, finance, and business, and to guide a satanic system that is now rising quickly to position itself for a takeover of the world. The elite globalists have named this complex system the Great Reset, and its chief proponent is Klaus Schwab, a former member of the United Nations Advisory Board on Sustainable Development and the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum that meets annually in the Swiss resort town of Davos. If we are still here, Lord willing, next time we're going to take a very close look at Klaus Schwab and begin to examine the sinister, satanic, satanically inspired operations of the Great Reset, which not only transform and control all politics, all finance, and all business as we once knew it, it also collectively paves the way for the future introduction of an individual who is going to be the Antichrist. <clears throat> Excuse me. I might also note that it's no coincidence that Pope Francis, who many now view as the false prophet, is integrating his ecumenical state of religion into the very same operations of the Great Reset. The Great Reset is witchcraft of the highest order. Now in closing, we need to remember that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God is allowing us to see prophecy being fulfilled for a reason and a purpose. And here's my takeaway from all of this. <clears throat> Evidence everywhere now points to how close we are to the tribulation and the appearance of the Antichrist. 
It's time to accept the reality that the world we once knew is gone. And that's good news because this world is not our home anyway. Hallelujah. Now we know that the rapture will take place before the tribulation. But no man knows the day or hour that Jesus will take us out of here. And he alone is granting us the opportunity to see a glimpse of the strange satanic darkness that will soon sweep this planet. He is doing this so that we will get our house in order and spread the gospel to anyone and everyone who will listen in these last days. The days are short and the fields are white for the harvest. Be very aware that the enemy knows who we are and he is going to fight us every way he can. But always remember this. Our God, Jehovah the Almighty, is in total and complete control of everything we see happening and the prophecies in his word will be fulfilled in his timing. Listen to what the Lord himself tells us in Isaiah chapter 55 <clears throat> God says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Amen. Praises be to our Lord and our God who reigns forever. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for explaining to us what is going on around us. Lord, the enemy has kicked up his power a notch. And Lord, we need to be aware of this. And we need to kick up our power a notch. Lord, give us opportunities to witness to others. Give us opportunities to spread the gospel in these last hours. And Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen.